It looks crooked. Stop it. Oh, camera. Refrigerator started making that noise right when I started, right when we started, of course. What's up everyone, Jace Two Cents here, and the Christmas season has just passed, and that every single year that means uh, one thing. Some of you are either gonna be upgrading or building your new system, you got some cash and you're thinking about building or buying your first system, or neither of those apply to you and you just are here to watch this video and laugh at me, but whatever, whatever the case is, those are all perfectly acceptable. So what I thought today was a perfect time to do was to talk about whether or not right now, the end of December, beginning of January, 2017, 2018, is the right time to build, buy, or upgrade your computer. Because that's the question everybody asks, right? Should I do it now or should I wait? Let's talk about that. Now we take building computers pretty seriously here at Jay's Two Cents, but not nearly as serious as we take protecting our online experience. So today's sponsor is NordVPN, and right now they are giving my viewers a 77% discount off a three-year plan by going to nordvpn.com slash Jay's Two Cents. That's J-A-Y-Z. T-W-O-C-E-N-T-S. Now VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and gives you a military level grade of encryption between you and more than a thousand servers in 61 different countries and that number is growing weekly. Now a virtual private network is more important than ever with the ever-changing political landscape, constant net neutrality litigation, and the dangers of open networks. Now connecting to an open network is probably one of the most dangerous things you can do whether it be on your computer or your mobile device and NordVPN actually encrypts that data and protects you from the internet acting like a barrier keeping you safe. Connecting to an open internet might seem incredibly convenient, but they're also incredibly dangerous. So that's why using something like NordVPN on your mobile devices as well, including iOS, Android, all your popular browsers is going to keep you safe and protect it. So protect yourself from prying eyes, ISPs, and internet slowdowns by checking out NordVPN and getting 77% off a three-year plan by heading to nordvpn.com slash jays 2 cents or just click the link down in the description below. But before we start, it's kind of kind of warm in here. <laughs> I'm actually undressing for the camera, Nick. Oh my God, where, where does this come to? It's come down to this. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's better. One of two. Where's the other one? Really, get over here. Whoa, Jesus, you just kicked the camera. And you wonder why I'm always telling you move stuff. Because you trip over, and now go fix the camera. Okay. <laughs> you guys have been asking for a shirt like this, but you're not gonna get it. Sorry, I'm not planning on making a Jay's the Dick Hole shirt. And I digress, maybe. Yeah. Stop it. So to understand why people might be afraid to build or upgrade their PCs right now, you have to kind of go back a few years to understand. AMD, prior to the Ryzen, you know, the Zen architecture launch, the last truly new CPU they came out with was in 2011, which was the bulldozer architecture, which unfortunately was a bit of a letdown. The IPCs were not as good as they were supposed to be. They had eight, cores, we'll call them, but there were four core modules with two core per module, a shared, a shared L2 cache, so all that stuff was a bit disappointing, but uh, it, it, it came after the Phenom series of processors, which was very popular, very price competitive, and gave buyers a good value. The problem was every single year after that, Intel came out with fairly new architectures, right? We had Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, we had Haswell, we had Devil's Canyon, right? Every single year we had something. Even though they weren't quite the improvements we were looking for every single year, the bottom line was every year something came around where AMD was giving us incremental improvements on the same exact architecture. So basically it was Bulldrover, Bulldrover. But AMD basically gave us small improvements on the same architecture, bulldozer, pile driver, excavator, and all that. The problem was it was not keeping up with pace of Intel. Regardless of your position on that, the, the IPCs and the benchmark showed it fell behind big time. So AMD became the easy go-to for budget and value. So really what it came down to was every single year when in Intel launched their new platforms, whether it was going to be an X platform or a Z platform, mainstream platform, it was pretty simple. When it came out, you had about a solid year to know that nothing was really gonna come out. So it made it easy to decide, okay, June, Computex time, something new came out, you're safe until at least the next spring or, or summer. But that all changed in 2017. And with that, the new Ryzen launch from AMD created competition in the space, which is something we sorely lacked, but we also sorely underestimated 
was the confusion it was gonna create inside of our own minds about the proper time to upgrade. So spring of 2017 saw the launch of Ryzen, which was huge because we saw the Ryzen 7 launch first, then shortly after Ryzen 5 and then Ryzen 3, and then moving into late summer, Threadripper. Four new CPU families to choose from on AMD alone. And what we saw was that they were competing with their Intel cousins, we'll call them cousins, but they were competing with their Intel cousins at a much better price point. So now became the, the, the turmoil inside. Should I buy Intel or should I buy AMD? And that is what we heard all of 2017. Now Intel initially said they weren't worried about Ryzen. They're like, nope, we think people are gonna adopt a wait and see attitude. Well, guess what? People didn't wait and see. People immediately went out and bought and AMD got back a big chunk of market share, which they were sorely lacking. So Intel responded by launching the X series platform in Computex, which wasn't supposed to be launched until the fall of 2017 and Coffee Lake, which Z370 wasn't supposed to be launched until 2018. So both of those platforms got pulled in to 2017. So that means you had Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, Threadripper, X299, and Z370 platforms all launched in the same year. That's six, I had to count, I had to count that. that why did I leave this thumb out? Whatever, that's six. Six new CPU families to choose from this year and rumor has it already, we're talking about a new platform for Intel in early 2018. So what that has created is a confusion inside the buyer's mind of being afraid of buying or building something now because kind of like in the early days of PC where it was like you build your PC and two months later it's obsolete, that's kind of what people are afraid of happening once again. Now with all of those new launches though, also means the inclusion of DDR4 RAM. And because of that, the amount of people upgrading, building and buying in 2017, and the market share improvement on AMD's side, we now have more systems being built and upgraded than ever before, which has put a strain on the RAM market. So your CPU RAM and all of these CPUs use DDR4, which unfortunately has made the price of DDR4 more than double in the last 18 months, which is really unfortunate because now you have competition in the CPU space and not enough RAM to go around. Supply and demand took place and now RAM has more than doubled in price, which is really unfortunate. So that's a downside obviously to building right now, but that can't be helped. Now on the GPU side of things, we saw something happen obviously with the last two years or so with cryptocurrency, where cryptocurrency being offloaded onto GPUs was seeing a huge strain on GPU supply and demand. And AMD, no one would have suspected, had a really good hash performance over at uh, NVIDIA, which made like the RX series, like the RX 480, RX 580, 470, 570, absolute monsters in terms of value when it comes to cryptocurrency mining. So what we saw there was an inflated GPU market, which again, made it very unfortunate where we had CPUs to choose from that were competitive and priced, I'll say price to performance was coming down. The overall price of CPUs sort of stayed the same, but what you got for that money was more. Unfortunately, you got less GPU for your money. So this is, this is the background you need to know when you try and decide the future because these create cycles and cycles either repeat themselves or break and you can kind of tell what's gonna happen in the future based on the past. That's why history is so important. But now it looks like the Bitcoin bubble is starting to burst again. It kind of goes through these cycles, right? GPU prices have normalized and a train's going by. And that was the Bitcoin train, you missed it. <laughs> but no, seriously, Bitcoin prices were super inflated and all these other cryptocurrencies kind of came up. And, uh, but now that things have normalized, the only thing you really have to be concerned with is RAM pricing. Now let's talk about whether or not you should build or buy now. Here is my answer, and this is the way I always treat this. And the reason why this is sitting on the table right here is yes, if you need a computer now, buy it now. Get the best you can for your money now. The only time I will typically tell people to wait is in the summer because Computex is the world stage. A lot of people are afraid of CES, like new things are coming at CES. Sometimes AMD will launch something like APU related or, or laptop related, unless you're looking specifically for that. There's not a whole lot to wait for. Computex is the world stage when it comes to computers and new platforms tend to launch right around then. Now GPUs will also tend to launch right around the April, May timeframe because especially with Nvidia, because that sort of uh, revolves around GDC and GTC, which is Game Developer Conference and Graphics Developer or Graphics Technology Conference. So you've got these two things that obviously use your graphics cards, which is when new graphics cards tend to be launched. So that's why I say the summertime is kind of when I would say wait. But winter and fall are usually really good seasons to buy because you can get good deals of end of year pricing, sales obviously around the holidays, Boxing Day, you know, New Year's sales, all that stuff. It's a really 
good time to buy. Now, I don't think you have to be worried about your computer becoming obsolete. That's the thing people are afraid of, is that, oh my God, I built this thing now, and then this launched. Now, that kind of happened with the Terry Crews build, but the difference there is I just wanted him to have the top of the line. So a new Titan card came out, like a week before I delivered the computer to him, which meant a last minute upgrade. But did that make the Titan X's he had prior to that obsolete? Absolutely not. I mean, it kind of stings a little bit when you might get a little bit more for your money, but given the fact that we have not seen a huge jump forward in CPU tech, or GPU tech, honestly, I mean, Volta just launched, but that's a whole nother topic. Uh, it, it's safe to say that your computer that you built, at the time that you built it, if it meets your needs, and it's gonna meet your needs for the, the near future and the long-term future, depending on, on how high your budget was, nothing's changed with that computer. It's still giving you the same level of performance that you wanted when you bought it. So because something new that came, came out and faster and probably more expensive, it doesn't change the fact that the computer you already built and bought is meeting the needs. Now, whether or not you should upgrade comes down to the, one simple question that I always ask when anyone asks me, should I build or buy a new computer? Building a new computer, if you don't have one, absolutely, yes, don't wait. Do it now, again, unless it's summer. But upgrading, one question can answer that. Can your computer do what you want it to do as fast as you want it to do it? And if the answer is no, then yes, it's time to upgrade. Any computer can do anything. A potato computer can render a video. It just might take eight hours to do it. If you don't wanna wait eight hours and you wanna do it in 20 minutes like we do, 4K videos around here render in 20 minutes because I've got a lot of horsepower in that computer. It makes sense for us. But does it make sense for you? Only you can answer that. So if your computer is not giving you the frames per second that you want, or it's not giving you the load times that you want, or the render times that you want, then yes, it's time to upgrade. It's that simple of a question. There's no need to overcomplicate it. Now, usually the only thing that holds someone back from upgrading or whatever is gonna be budget. And that budget usually dictates the level of performance that you're gonna get. Very few people build systems like this. Th these, are, these are not needed. Nobody needs a computer like this. It's fun to build a computer like this. And there are you know, few people in the world that can afford to build computers like this, but that's a want and not a need. When it comes to building your computer, like I said, if it does what you need it to do, it doesn't matter if something new just came out. I mean, it's kind of like when a new model car comes out right after you bought your car, it kind of stings a little bit, but at the end of the day, your car is still getting you to point A to point B, and it's doing everything you wanted it to do when you bought it. And that's what matters. Enthusiasts care about having the top of the line. Enthusiasts care about being able to have bragging rights. But I don't think enthusiasts make up the core of this community, which is the, is the typical user and buyer who's out there shopping for things like an i3 or a Ryzen 3. Those guys, I mean, if you fall in that category, you are, you, are the, you are the boat that is floating this whole community because those sales, that's what keeps these companies running. Not the people that are running out buying 7980XEs, not the people buying Titan Voltas. It's the people that are out there buying the 1050s and the 1050Ti's or people buying the low-end Radeon cards or whatever. Those are the people that are keeping this community going. So my answer is the same to anyone that asks whether or not right now is a good time to buy, unless it's the summer, yes. Build your computer, enjoy it. Watch videos about the new high-end stuff, but at the end of the day, your computer still is doing what you need it to do. If it's not, then it's time to upgrade. If you've got any suggestions about what can help the mindset of building or buying a new computer, then put it down in the comments below, because I like to get a, a viewer perspective on this stuff. And that's why we did the video where I gave the computer to the, to the guy at Micro Center, Sam at Micro Center. Uh, it was still interesting to go through that and listen to his perspective when he's shopping for things, which made an awful lot of sense. I was kind of proud because they're the same kind of things that I usually tell people. But uh, yeah, it, it, everyone's perspective is different. But at the end of the day, it's your computer and that's all that should matter. And building it and enjoying it and playing games on it, that's all that matters, right? All right, guys, we're gonna go. Thanks for watching today's video. If you've got any suggestions on future content that you wanna see or you just wanna add to today's video, do it in the comments below. 2017 has been great. 2018 is gonna be even better. Kicking it off, obviously, with CES. Gonna be finishing up this guy and the Post Malone part two is gonna be coming sometime in January. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.